welcome to Echo Church. We are so excited to worship with you today. Echo is a great place that you can call home. And if you're joining us for the first time, we hope that you feel part of the family. If you're new to us, we would love to get to know you. So we've made it really easy to let us know that you're visiting us today. And we've got a gift to say thanks for joining us. Simply text the word ECHO to this number, 94253. Click on the link that we'll send you, and there you can share a little about yourself. And if you'd like, you can share a prayer request as well. Again, text ECHO to 94253. Then if you're joining us in person, stop by our guest services kiosk after the service because we have a great t-shirt waiting for you. Also, now is a really great time to connect at Echo and we can help. We've created a one night course designed to help you learn more about Echo, to take your first steps to grow in your faith and to become part of the Echo family. We call it Echo Steps and everyone is invited to sign up today. Simply text the word ECHO to 94253. Then click the button letting us know that you're interested in attending. We'll help you register for the next class. Do not wait. Now is the time to connect. Text ECHO to 94253 and sign up today. Finally, we believe that God has a special encouragement that He wants to share with all of us. So as we continue in the service, let's prepare our hearts to hear encouragement from God's word. We keep playing with fire All right, all right. No, thank you so much. Good morning, Echo Church. So good to be back again. Um, as many of you know, this is where we called home for quite a while until we moved to Cincinnati. And so um, this place means so much to, to my family and I. Um, our kids love when they get to come back and go back to the Echo Kids rooms and spend time back there. And so um, just so glad to be back. And speaking of giving honor, I know I had you do this last time, but they weren't here to receive it. Um, can we just show some, some love and honor uh, to our pastors, Pastor Chad and Katie over here and their family? <laughs> Unbelievable. So can't tell you what they mean to us, to my family. Uh, my friendship um, with him and um, still continues to pastor over my life. I can't thank him enough for that. So um, he mentioned summer. I'm just so glad to be joining you um, this summer. It's, it's my prayer for you. If, you. if your summer is anything like mine, you, you approach it and you start to think, I'm going to get to take a breath of fresh air and, and chill out a little bit. And then summer is like by far crazier and wilder than the school year was. And you're just off doing a million things. And so um, it's my prayer for each of you that, that sometime this summer that God might reveal a way um, that he's calling you to come into uh, just a deeper walk with him, whatever that might be. Maybe it's a, a first step with Jesus, a next step with Jesus. Maybe it's serving um, somewhere. I know Serve Day's coming up. <clears throat> Maybe it's getting on the dream team here at Echo Church and, and helping Echo carry its mission um, even further into the community um, and, and surrounding communities as well. Whatever that might be, uh, I just pray that, that God reveals that to you this summer. I've, I've asked that uh, of myself because I've, I've almost felt a complacency this summer. And I was like, God, show me, show me another, some, some more more ground that I can take in my life for uh, a deeper relationship with you. So today we are going to finish up the series Deep Clean. And um, hadn't the series been awesome? Those of you that have been around, hadn't they been good? Um, I've got to go back and watch some of them. And I'm telling you, I've been convicted, motivated, and encouraged. Like, I need um, a deep clean in this area. My soul needs it. I, I have a sneaking suspicion that with the year we've had, I'm not alone in that. So I think this series was so perfectly placed by God on Pastor Chad's heart. It's, it's done that for me, and I hope it's done that for you. And so if this is your first time here, or maybe you've uh, been away a while, or maybe you missed a, a portion of uh, this series, I'm just going to kind of roll back through and, and talk about some of the things that um, he's talked about so far. Just a quick re recap. So in week one, um, he talked about disappointment and how we can adjust the way that we view our pain and suffering. Not that pain and suffering isn't going to happen, but we can adjust our view too. To it. And then he talked about fear and challenge. And I, okay, is this a year that we can say, yeah, if, if anybody said they haven't been afraid of something a little bit this year, I'd, I'd be worried that you were telling the truth. And so um, he talked about fear, challenge us to think about if we were going to remain in our fears or, or let our faith rise up, point us to Jesus. Then he talked about emptiness and talked about how we might be trying to 
fulfill uh, our soul's thirst for the eternal with the temporary. And I think we could all agree that well, we've all done that um, this year, if, if not longer, for myself and for others. And then last week, Pastor Chad talked about loneliness. If we let this go unchecked, we can begin to drift towards isolation. And I think the reason I felt compelled um, to give you that recap is that I think that if we don't perform a deep clean in each one of those areas or whatever uh, area uh, might be affecting our heart, I think uh, it's very possible that it would lead right into what we're going to talk about today, and that's anger. Uh, and the first thing I want to tell you um, is that God knew what he was doing when he orchestrated me coming back to um, give this message for me. I, I realized as I was writing this that if, if zero people came to hear it today that I needed to write this uh, message and give it for myself, for God to do work on my heart so that I could start to perform a deep clean uh, in this area. So I've, I've struggled with anger this year in a much different way than I ever have in the past. Now I'm a, as, as Pastor Chad said, I'm a football coach and um, I'll be honest, I'm a pretty passionate one and competitive one. Um, and so I've always had to check myself when it comes to letting my intensity drift into uh, temper and then letting my temper get the best of me. And if, I think if you're out and about, there's probably a few referees in this area who would tell you yeah, he, needs to, he needs to work in that area. But that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not the anger I'm talking about today. I'm just continuing to work on that. The anger I'm talking about today, um, the way it's affected me this last year is much uh, deeper, And I, I think with the things that have been thrown at us this year, the, the challenges, the struggles, the divisions, the tensions, um, from it seems like all directions, if anyone's like me, it's caused there to be more of a slow, simmering buildup uh, of anger um, in our hearts. And it's the type that we don't even necessarily know that it's happening or, or feel it all the time. And so if you're, if you're sitting there and you're saying, well, I haven't struggled with anger at all, just, just hang on with me and maybe listen. Um, because if it hits you anyway, like it hit me, like you, you really don't know. And then you're, you're scrolling through social media and you just find yourself like just things are starting to get a rise out of you that never had. And it's starting to make you feel, um, a little more emotional, uh, in a way than it ever has. And, um, while that's not necessarily bad, I, I felt it starting to drift into other areas of my life. Like I think because I was getting frustrated at the current events I was reading and seeing the things I saw on the news and I was that 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 rise up was starting to happening, I found myself being more impatient with my kids, um, being more short with them, or, or maybe just being a little more temperamental at home with my family. And so hang on with me. If you feel that it's not affecting you right now, just hang on with me um, because you may not know what's going on, but uh, the things that are being thrown at us will eventually cause you to start to feel uh, a little bit of anger. And so I, I kind of realized as I, as I wrote this, that's happening to me. I think across the board, we're just mad. This, this year we've grown mad at people, mad at COVID, mad at our financial situation, our job, mad at politics, come on somebody, mad at views that don't line up with ours. We've just been mad. And so here's the big idea today. I think we've developed an anger problem that God is more than capable of cleaning up. I think we've developed an anger problem. So those of you taking notes on the app, an anger problem that God is more than capable of cleaning up. So a quick disclaimer, I, I, I know um, I, there's probably a few of you sitting there that, that want to come to the defense of, of anger real quick. And I, I know that not all anger is bad. I know that righteous anger has his place. For, for example, if, if one of our kids runs out in our cul-de-sac as a car is coming around the corner and they just run out there with reckless abandon and the car has to kind of slam on its brakes, you know, you know that feeling. It's kind of a quick fear that turns into like this intensity of parenthood, your, your desire to protect. And so you kind of yell at your kid, like stay out of the street. Um, and it's all just to protect them. Or, or you see a, a, a major injustice take place in our world and that makes you feel angry. I know that righteous anger has its place, but that's not what I'm talking about today. What I'm talking about today is unholy anger, anger that lingers and simmers and places calluses on our heart um, that lead us to develop tainted views or opinions or thoughts towards others. It causes us to, to say things we don't mean or to snap uh, at our loved ones over and over again. I've been there. Um, causes us to maybe slander people on social media or at least think that we want to. Um, it just causes us to feel far from the type of love and grace that Jesus calls us uh, to live in. That's the type of anger that I want to talk about today. And I want to read some stats to you real quick. So these numbers uh, come from a survey conducted by the American Psychological Association. They found that over the course of 2020, 49% of adults surveyed said that their behavior had been negatively affected. 
I think we can all agree in some form or fashion. 30% said that they have a close friend, friend or family member that has trouble controlling their anger. 25% of people said that they worry about how angry they sometimes feel. And then 60% agreed to the statement that people in general are getting angrier. And then 20%, so one, if you look around the room, one in every five of adults polled said that they've ended a relationship or friendship with someone because of their anger. In short, we're, we are letting unholy, unrighteous anger take more and more root in our hearts, and it's permeate, permeating to the surface in ways that are destructive to ourselves and to those around us. So here's, here's the question. How do, we, how do we know when this type of anger is beginning to take hold and simmer in our hearts? I think there's some telltales that we can look for in our life, some ways we can identify this in ourselves. Number one, I think angry people tend to be overly critical of others. I'm not talking about holding others accountable in love or uh, helping those we, we love to identify areas of, of growth in their lives and helping them on the journey of improvement. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about finding fault after fault after fault uh, in others and then letting those faults that we place on them start to get under our skin and irritate us. I think we've developed such a bad habit of harshly judging others, and then after we've placed our own verdict upon them, we begin to harbor kind of an angry spite towards them because of whatever it is that we decided about them. Here's the problem. We make very poor uh, judges. I've learned this about myself, and James calls us out on this. He says, do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge. He is able to, he who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? As I mentioned earlier, this message is for me. How do I know that I've been harboring more anger in my heart this year? I've been so overly critical of others. I found myself doing it time and time again as I roll through social media or look at quotes by celebrities or professional sports athletes or even just view those around me as I, as I walk about my daily life. I've been so critical of others. I've passed my own unfounded, unfair judgments on people time and time again this year. The second way I think we can identify this is that angry people tend to point fingers. Now, we're, we're talking about anger, so I feel that I better clarify I'm talking about like metaphorically pointing fingers, not like something you might do in like a road rage moment. If that's, so just to make sure we're on the same page about the finger pointing we're talking about. No, seriously, I think that right now anger can lead us into this cycle of blaming others for all of our struggles and challenges. And then when we blame others, we get angry at them for it. And then because we're angry, we start to point even more and more fingers and put more blame on others. And on and on this cycle goes. It spirals to the point where we eliminate all responsibility from ourselves, put all of the blame on others, and then when we do, we stir up even more anger in our hearts because of it. And see if you can relate to any of these uh, quotes. I, th I think we've tended this year to say things like, well, it's, it's this political party's fault, or it's that political party's fault, or uh, it's that country's fault. It's people who don't wear masks fault, or maybe it's people who fear COVID too much. It's their fault. It's my boss or co-worker's fault. It's my spouse's fault. It's my kid's fault. It probably was my kid's fault, but that's neither here nor there. That's another, it's this or that news outlet's fault, or it's Generation X or Y or Z, or it's Millennials' fault. The list goes on and on. I think we have tended to point uh, fingers in those ways. I'm, I'm not saying that other people aren't sometimes responsible for things happening to us, but they aren't in control of our response. Paul puts it this way in Romans. He says, but we rejoice in our sufferings. Knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. See, our response is on us. Anger will cause us to constantly blame others, which leads to what? Harboring more anger in our hearts. God calls us to, instead of blaming others, look inward. And allow him uh, to help us heal uh, and grow even more steadfast in our faith because of whatever trial we're going through. Don't immediately start pointing fingers on others. Look inward and see, how can God help me grow through this? See, nonstop finger pointing has become, become so commonplace in society today. And I think that it is a precursor to and side effect of unrighteous anger. 
think the third way we can identify this in ourselves and, and maybe um, the most damaging way is that angry people tend to experience toxic professional and personal relationships. So think back to the stat that I just read you earlier. One of every five people that took place in the APA survey said that they have ended a friendship or relationship this year because of someone's anger. Proverbs paints a great picture of this for us. It says, make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. So the Bible teaches us that um, being around an angry person is to willingly walk into a trap of anger and resentment that's going to lead to tension, hostility, um, heightened tempers, and even sometimes rage. And when those things start to take root in our relationships, the relationships become toxic. Um, I think, unfortunately, we all probably know the type that we're talking about, just a constant clashing, a constant butting of heads. And then that toxic relationship can get so to the point that it's so bad that it becomes an unlivable relationship. And, um, and so we can't fix everyone, and that's not what I'm asking us to even think about doing. I'm asking us to take a good, hard look in the mirror and ask ourselves, am I becoming one of these people? Am I becoming one of these people that's harboring anger? Am I going to be the trap that someone close to me, someone that I love, walks into? And all of a sudden, those relationships start to grow hostile and toxic. Um, as, we, as we look in the mirror, uh, the question becomes, how do we start this type of deep clean? If we look in the mirror and we say, I think that I could possibly, with everything going on, with everything that I'm reading and watching and the anger I'm harboring because of it, um, that I'm becoming one of those people that if you're around me, it just tends to drift towards the negative, towards the angry, towards the finger pointing uh, and the being overly critical. And if I'm one of those people, we need to ask God, help me do a deep clean of the anger that I'm storing up in my heart. So how do we do that? How do we allow God to come alongside us in this type of deep clean? So we're going to use an acronym, ANGER, A-N-G-E-R, to kind of work through this. If you're taking notes, you'll kind of see how that breaks down so that maybe through this acronym is something we can store in our memories and uh, recall and take with us as we start to face this issue in our lives. So number one, we'll kick it off with acknowledge our triggers. We need to identify the things that are getting under our skin and starting to harden our hearts. And they're different for everybody. Maybe it's Politics. Maybe it's how different people respond to masks and vaccinations, or maybe it's finances, or it's certain viewpoints on a major current event, or it's the strain and stress that this past year has put on your marriage or on your, on your parenting. Whatever it is, we all have those things in our daily lives start to stir up anger in our hearts. And uh, as the Bible teaches, we can't completely avoid these things, we have, but we can keep them in their proper place as far as our, our priorities go. We can't, we can't completely get away from them. We can't shut them off and pretend they don't exist as much as we might like to. We might like to hit delete on COVID and on masks and vaccinations or, or the other, or just hit delete on politics for a while. And maybe we just don't pay attention to it um, for a little bit because it seems like it doesn't matter what side you're on. You feel like the enemy. So we can't turn those off, but we can keep them in their proper place. Romans uh, 12 verse 2 says this, do not conform, conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. See those triggers that we identify in our lives that are starting to cause us to harbor anger? Those are the patterns of the world. And again, we can't just pretend that they don't exist. We have to confront them but we don't have to conform to them. We have to confront them, but we don't have to conform to them. We don't have to let them dominate our hearts and minds. And how do we become renewed by transforming our mind? We, we acknowledge these to God in prayer daily, asking him to help us uh, keep our minds and hearts free from becoming angry as we deal with any of these things that trigger that anger in us. So praying that even as these things are thrust in front of us, which I think we all can agree they are every day. It seems like that is kind of the new norm is to just thrust these things into our face, whether it's social media or the news or the conversation at work, the bill in the mail, the argument with the spouse or with your kids, whatever it is, 
that we would pray that we might approach them in a way that aligns with God's pleasing and perfect will in our lives. And I can't speak to each of you and, uh, on, on what God's specific will might be for your life, but I can confidently say this. His will is not for you to walk around with anger stored up in your heart towards others. It's not for you to walk around with anger stored up in your heart towards others. No, regardless of the specifics, his overarching will for all of our lives is to walk with love and grace towards others, regardless of where they stand on one topic or another. Number two, never uh, let the devil gain a stronghold in your life. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 says this, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Look, there we, we have an enemy who would love nothing more than for us to continue to stockpile anger in our hearts. Um, and if we look around at, at the things going on, we can see uh, the weapons that he's using to kind of throw those things in our face to make that happen. He would love nothing more than for us to continue to let that simmer so that when it does come to the surface, it does so in a damaging way, a way that destroys relationships, um, divides people, ruins reputations, and distances us from God. See, the longer we go without confronting our anger, without doing that deep clean, the better stronghold we give our enemy to use our anger as ammo to do serious damage with. Uh, and that's a dangerous place to be when we are giving him ammo to do damage in our lives and in our relationships. And so um, there's really no more time to waste. It's time to decide to bring anger into the light. Don't let it simmer any longer. Give it to God. Share it openly with him or even find a trusted friend or loved one who you feel comfortable sharing it with and ask them to help you stay accountable when it comes to diffusing anger as soon as it starts to rise. I would challenge you to do this. Don't go to bed tonight without having a heart-to-heart -heart with God about the areas of your heart that have been hardened this year. Asking him to begin to, to dig that up and restore love, kindness, and grace in its place. So uh, that brings us to number three, grace triumphs over anger. How do we defeat the evil that is unholy anger in our lives? We kill it with kindness. And I know that sounds really cliche, so we'll look at the way the Bible explains it instead. In Romans 12, Paul says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. And then here it is, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So again, we, we can't always, or we won't always, agree with everyone and everything, but we can decide our response. And if we don't want our response to be the building up of anger, we have to replace it with something else. And so what I'm asking us to replace it with is the giving of grace instead. And we'll see what that looks like um, in just a second. So that, that political viewpoint that you staunchly disagree with or the person whose values are on the completely opposite end of the spectrum or uh, the economic situation or the boss or coworker that knows the right buttons to push to get under your skin uh, or the social media posts that would normally set you off. Whatever it is, respond in grace. So um, hear me on this. Grace doesn't mean that we're always going to agree. That's not the case. There's going to be conflict in our lives. Grace simply means being able to choose empathy. So putting ourselves in someone else's shoes. Empathy, patience, tolerance, and understanding. That's what grace is. It's choosing those things each time that we confront something that we may not agree with, like, or even worse, hurts us. Um, and, and grace sometimes might look like saying nothing and walking away. Like, that might be grace for me every now and then. It's like, you know what? About all the grace I have in the tank is to just say nothing and walk away. And look, um, that's not a bad thing. It's better than continuing to stay in a situation or conversation that is full of nothing but clashing and tension. And so sometimes grace is just walking away. And then as we grow in our ability to give grace, then it looks like operating in patience and understanding and love towards those we may not see eye to eye with. And so saying we're going to respond with grace and then actually doing it, two way different things. 
Um, truly respond, responding in grace is really hard. It goes against the grace of our broken human nature. So the only way we're going to be able to accomplish this is to accept that we don't have the capability of our own. But, as we heard in the song, with the Holy Spirit, we are capable. So every time we sense anger starting to build up in our hearts, call on the Holy Spirit to adjust our hearts and minds and help us to respond in grace. This is what it means to pray without ceasing, as it tells us to do in Thessalonians. It's to remain in connection with the Holy Spirit throughout the day in our lives. Call upon him each and every time we feel we need to crush anger with grace. Number four, extend forgiveness. Colossians 3, 12, and 13 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. So I know that grace and forgiveness sound very similar, but um, in my mind, just to let you know kind of my thought process, there is a difference as I prepared this for me, uh, and that difference is that grace is more of a on-the-spot kind of reflexive response to things that happen daily, things that, that you have to deal with and, and confront every day, the things we're seeing in this world, whereas I see forgiveness as being more of a long process, a long process leading to a choice uh, to finally let go of a hurt that we've been carrying around for quite a while. So, so grace for me uh, is an on-the-spot, something you weren't prepared for, but the way you operate. Forgiveness is something, um, a hurt you've been carrying around maybe beyond this past year. Maybe this past year has helped to amplify uh, a hurt or remind you of a, of a hurt that you've been carrying around. That's where forgiveness steps in. So we've, some of us are carrying a, a deep-seated hurt right now. Maybe we've, we've been carrying it um, this past year or even longer, and it has become the root of the anger that we are suppressing in our hearts. The only way you're going to get to this area of your heart to give it uh, that deep clean is to truly forgive that person or situation. And this one's not going to come easy either. Um, it's going to take lots and lots of prayer, but the more you ask God to soften your heart, to, to forgive the person or situation, the more he will respond and do so. I'm confident in that. And eventually you'll get to the point where you are ready to truly forgive. And when you do, you will feel a sense of heavy anger just wash from your heart in that moment. And so that's what I'm calling on, uh, calling on you to do today is if you're carrying around that deep-seated hurt, make today the day that maybe it doesn't happen today, but that you start praying for God to soften that area of your, of your heart towards that person or situation. And then lastly... And I think the most important, remember the common ground. Remember the common ground. There have been so many things that have rocked our foundation this last year, year and a half, from the pandemic and all that it entails to a very fierce election and ongoing political division to injustices, to economic struggles, escalating tensions both here and around the world, so on and so forth. And we're living in a time where all of those things, those things that reveal the differences we have with one another, are being highlighted, sensationalized, and push on to, pushed on to us in a way that leads us to harbor anger towards those that we don't see eye to eye with. If you don't believe me, go on social media today or watch the news today. Um, it is chalked full of highlighting and pushing into the forefront the differences that we have with one another. What not enough people are talking about is that through everything, everything that's been thrown at us, and in spite of all the disagreements we might have with one another, there is one thing that we all have in common, and that is God's saving grace in Jesus Christ that is offered to each and every person that you have encountered or will encounter. Each and every person that has angered you or that will anger you, we all have that in common. God's saving grace in Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 4 says this, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. You'll notice it doesn't say be kind and compassion, compassionate to those um, that view COVID the same way you do or that, or that have been vaccinated or uh, that voted the same way you did or that have the same values as you, or that think and act the same way you do. 
or that appreciate you the way they should. That may be the one that I'm most guilty of, or that support the same movements you do, or even that never hurt you. It doesn't say anything like that. It says, forgiving one another, period. Because that's the same kindness, compassion, and forgiveness that Jesus went to the cross for. Available to all. If we want to solve a majority of our anger issues, we've got to stop focusing on the differences um, and highlighting the differences and instead remember the common ground of the gospel. Now listen, I don't want this next part to sound like I'm putting a bunch of, of pressure on you, but I desperately feel that we, myself at the top of the list, have to immediately and steadfastly do a deep clean of the anger that we've started to let simmer this past year. What if, what if Echo Church, what if we took a stand today that we're going to let God help us perform a deep clean in that area? And it, all of a sudden it becomes noticeable to the, to the people that you encounter this week and beyond. All of a sudden um, my wife's like, Man, your demeanor at home has been so much more patient and loving and, and grace-filled and forgiving. And my kids notice that my uh, temperament is way better. I'm not as short. I'm not as frustrated. I'm happier. I'm more joyful. What if people notice that in our lives and they want to know how? How are you so filled with joy, hope, patience, kindness, grace, and compassion? And then you use that springboard to, to help start the deep clean in their lives. And then it becomes noticeable to the people that they encounter. You think you see where this is going. It may feel like uh, a small thing, but if we start with us, which I think we desperately need to do, I know I desperately need to do just for myself, for my heart, for my walk, for my home, then it permeates around our neighborhoods, communities, churches, whatever it may be. And I think we need it really badly right now. So we live about four minutes from King's Island. And um, so we have the, the whole nine yards. We're, we're gold pass holders. It makes me feel really cool. And I just have my gold pass and I walk past everybody who has to buy a ticket. Uh, that was probably prideful right there, actually. But um, and, and we've got the meal plans, the whole nine yards, big moment in our house. Cruz just hit 36 inches the other day, which opened up a whole new world for him at King's Island. It's been crazy. It's been awesome. Putting him on things we probably shouldn't. Um, testing the buckles, it'll all be okay. We love it. We love the place. It is a playground four minutes from our house. Um, it doesn't get any better. But it seems like so far this summer, every weekend, we're hearing about fights breaking out across the park and escalating violence and police, ha police having to rush in in droves and, and shutting the park down early. And then I added this yesterday when an article caught my eye just yesterday. Um, the article was talking about the TSA starting back up their self-defense classes for flight attendants. They've, they've done that in the past and stopped it for COVID and now are starting back up. But this particular article, they interviewed the president of the Association of Flight Attendants Unions. She said... And I quote, we have never seen this level of aggression or conflict on our planes, and we really need some help. The article said that there has been nearly 3,100 reports of unruly, aggressive passengers made from planes to the FAA in just 2021 so far. That's 515 reports of re aggressive or confrontational passengers every single month. 515. Listen, there's so much anger in our communities right now, and I, I feel that it's time for each of us personally to do our part to clean out our anger, to soften, repair our hearts, our, our communities, us, we so badly need the truth of Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, that with God we can let go of our bitterness and anger, that we have common ground in Jesus Christ that allows us to reach for grace and forgiveness and patience and understanding enjoy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today um, as a people ready to open our hearts to you doing a work in us, through us. That you might, whichever, whichever topic throughout this series has, has hit us personally, that you would help us to allow you through your Holy Spirit to, to do a work on our hearts, to begin to clean that out so we can replace it with the fruits of the Spirit that you intend to, for us to. As we pray, I want to give you a chance to, to respond to a couple things. First, um, as we have our eyes closed and, and heads bowed, maybe this one hits you as it does me. Maybe, maybe anger 
And maybe you didn't even know it before walking in here, but now you're thinking, you know what, as I think about what my heart feels as I scroll through social media or watch the news, maybe that is starting to happen. I wanna give you a chance to respond and open your heart right now before we leave to, to not get the, give the devil a stronghold in our lives. So if that's you, if you're ready to allow God to start to do a deep clean of the anger that you might be storing up, if you would just slip your hand into the air for a moment. God, with, with everyone who might have raised their hand or, or that um, think about this as they leave and it hits them, God, I pray that you would soften our hearts, start to give us the ability to operate in grace and forgiveness and remembering the common ground that is your son, Jesus Christ, and what he did for us on the cross. God, equip us. Equip us with the tools that we need to clean the anger out of our hearts and start to replace it with things that you intend for us to have in there. Help us to, to do that now without wasting any more time that we might do it to prevent the devil gaining a stronghold in our lives and using our anger to do damage with to ourselves or to others. Maybe there's another group in here who you know, have not yet taken that first step with Jesus. And as you've gone throughout this series or today, you want the help that God has to offer. And maybe you've been on the fence and now you're ready. Like, I want to do a deep clean. This is my moment to step in to the saving relationship that God offers us through Jesus. Maybe you're ready to take that first step and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Again, with, with all eyes closed and heads bowed, if that's you, if you're ready to take that first step, accept Jesus your Lord and Savior, if you just raise your hand into the air for just a moment. That's great. Anyone else? If that's you, just in your heart, would you pray this prayer after me? God, I'm ready. God, I know that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior, and I believe that you are that Savior. I believe that Jesus went to the cross for my sins, and I believe he died for me and then he rose again in new life to wash me clean of my sins and I God I believe that with that same spirit living inside me when I come into relationship with you that I can rise again into new life and I pray that you would be with me and help me to do that and walk that out for all the days of my life God thank you so much for today thank you so much for Echo Church equip us to go out and demonstrate a deep clean of the things that we need to remove and help others to do the same. It's in Jesus Christ's most heavenly holy name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining with us online today. If you pray with us just a moment ago, I want to challenge you to do something right now. Text the word ECHO to 94253. Click on the link that we'll send you and then take the bold step of letting us know the spiritual decision that you just made. Don't let what God is doing in your heart stay here. We can help you connect with others and grow in your faith. So right now, text ECHO to 94253 and let us know. In fact, for anyone that's wanting prayer or anyone that's interested in connecting at ECHO or taking a spiritual next step, text ECHO to 94253 and let us know how God is moving in your heart. If you have preschool and elementary children, I also want to encourage you to find our videos that we upload just for them. You can find them on our YouTube channel, Midtown is Preschool, Uptown is Elementary. Now, these videos are a lot of fun and they're a great way to spiritually encourage your family. More than anything, I want to invite you to bring your children to experience Echo Kids live each Sunday at Avon Middle School South. They have an absolute blast playing meaningful games, learning the Bible, uh, talking in small groups, and singing and dancing. Our Echo Kids team would love to welcome them very soon. Finally, if you'd like to get back to Echo through a tithe or offering, you can do so at echochurch.cc and simply click on the Give button. If you prefer, you can also do this in the echochurch.cc app and click on the Give button there as well. Uh, we want to thank you for your generosity and let you know that God is using your gift to echo His love into the hearts of so many people. All right, again, thanks for joining us online today. Next Sunday, I want to invite you to join us in person at Avon Middle School South. And, of course, we'll continue to have our messages online as well. Listen, we love you guys, and we will see you soon.